one night. Go out and play for the rest of your life. A worldwide stage. Blood, sweat, and tears. It's not just about the game tonight. Austin. Everything that we've been through since the beginning will be for that moment. Chicago. How does this feel? <gasps> oh, it doesn't get any better than this. The opportunity to live in infamy. Legends Cup 2018. Tonight, you leave everything on the field. We are in Austin, Texas, site of Legends Cup 2018. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL Football Night. Folks, it all comes down to tonight, the 2018 Legends Cup. And two of the biggest teams in the league are gonna tango the Austin Acoustic. Winners of the Western Conference will take on the Chicago Bliss, who beat the Nashville Knights in the Eastern Conference Championship. A couple storylines to watch. First and foremost, for the Austin Acoustic, this was a team winless in 2017. And as I said earlier, they've won the Western Conference and are playing on the biggest stage in the LFL tonight. For the Chicago Bliss, they're going to lose a couple veterans at the end of the season. Dominique Collins and Ali Alberts, both all fantasy players on that defensive side of the ball. We'll see how that impacts Chicago. Now I welcome in my broadcast partner, Bobby Huco. Bobby, we talked about it. The Chicago Bliss are always on this stage. In fact, six out of the last Legends Cups have had the Bliss. But the Austin Acoustic, that is really the surprise story of 2018. Right, the success of Austin, it starts from the top of the organization. Mike Oliveira, their head coach, a class act. Last night at the LFL Awards dinner, he was named LFL Coach of the Year. After the 2017 season, he went right to work the next day. Not the next month, the next day. They have the top off-season program in the LFL. He works harder than any coach in the league, and he recruits not only from Texas, but all around the world. From Mexico, he's got Anna Garza, and my favorite, Valeria Quintero. I love the way she plays football. And then he goes to Argentina. Maria Glazarega comes in. Great recruiting, great coach. He is the reason Austin is in the Legends Cup tonight. How do you say it, Maria Lorizarega? Lorizarega. I'm, I'm going to let that go. <laughs> now, besides Mike Oliveira being a major advantage for Austin, they're playing a home game here at HEB Center, so that's going to play a factor here. They're expecting a big crowd, highly charged up. For Chicago, the big story's also got to be injuries. Marissa Galladay, the all-fantasy defensive end, tore her ACL in the Eastern Conference Championship. She will not suit up tonight. And then watch Allie Alberts, the all-fantasy safety. She has a pair of broken ribs. She's going to be a game-time decision for the Bliss. Our own Heidi Golznick met with Allie Alberts to talk about her health coming into the Legends Cup, as well as this being her final LFL game. Thanks, Mitch. One of the most recognized faces in all of the LFL is Chicago Bliss safety Allie Alberts. Alberts has done it all in her LFL career, which includes being named to four All-Fantasy teams and two Legends Cup championships. I met with Alberts to discuss her injury status, as well as tonight being the last time she laces up her cleats in the LFL. Your final game in Chicago was like a Hollywood script, a game-winning interception. Take me back to that moment. It's, it's hard to describe, but it, the game could have went either way. They score, they could win. We stop them, we win. Um, to go off with a pick six, though, I mean, I, you can't write that stuff. It, it felt, it's indescribable. When you walk off that field tonight, how much are you gonna miss the game, your teammates and your coaches? Again, indescribable feeling. It, there's nothing like football. I've played on all these sports all my life. There's nothing like the game of football. It's literally like going to war with these girls. It doesn't matter who makes the game winning interception. It only matters if we win or lose the game. And we do all this for each other. So it's gonna leave a really large hole in my heart. Albert says today has been an emotional roller coaster, and while she's certainly excited to be playing in a Legends Cup championship, she knows that the next 40 minutes will be her final. Back to you guys. Thanks, Heidi. Allie Alberts has had a storied LFL career. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, Legends Cup 2018. It's the Chicago Bliss versus the Austin Acoustic, next. 
Back to LFL football night in Austin, Texas. A balmy evening outdoors, but we are indoors, folks, for Legends Cup 2018. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field. Thanks, guys. I'm here with newly named head coach of the year, Mike Olvera. Coach Olvera, what an exciting night for you last night, being named the LFL's head coach of the year. And now tonight, the opportunity to end what has been a Cinderella-like season for the Austin Acoustic. It's a great feeling, but uh, I'll trade that in for a Legends Cup tonight. No problem at all. Being named head coach of the year was certainly a highlight for Coach Olvera, but he and this Austin Acoustic team have their sights set on a different piece of hardware. Back to you guys for the start of Legends Cup 2018. Mike Olivera has his team ready to play. Keith Hack, the head coach of Chicago, he thought all year long the Nashville Knights were the top team besides his Chicago team. I really think it's going to be a good game tonight. There's a look at the numbers for Tashe Winfrey in the Western Conference Championship. Look very sharp. But again, the question always with Tashe Winfrey is, can she keep from making the big turnover? That's it. She's playing solid football right now. She has three top receivers. All of them are playing tonight. Cassandra Bills, Leilani Lopez, and Michelle Marshall. It should be fun to watch. A spread formation early. As Tashe Winfrey looks over the best defense she will face all season. First and 10, ball at the Austin 15. Winfrey back to pass, down the field. And overshooting her target. That was intended for Cassandra Bills. Cassandra Bills, she has the top wheels on this Austin team trying to go one-on-one -on -one against, in my opinion, a top cover cornerback in the league, Dominique Collins. Collins was all over it, there was nothing there. Winfrey threw it way over her head. I like the early shot down the field. That should open up this defense a bit for the running game for Austin. I absolutely think that's why they did it, because the safeties know they can go deep now. Now they have to play back. From the shotgun, a delayed draw. That's Rachel Washington. And Washington getting past the sticks and still on her feet all the way down to the Chicago 18. That's exactly what you mentioned. Watch the safety. Allie Alberts usually comes up on this. She's way back, thinking they might throw deep again. A 17-yard run on her first carry. Wow. Rachel Washington, one of the unsung heroes of this offense, has had a pretty solid season this year. Washington, 3.4. That doesn't sound like much. Two TDs, but she got 136 yards on the ground. Rachel Washington, a young back. Should be part of this offense for many years to come. A first and 10. This is Winfrey rolling right and threw at the feet of Aubrey Williams. Williams was wide open. Williams a target at the tight end position as we meet the starters for Austin. Leilani Lopez, wide receiver. Michelle Marshall, wide receiver. Mariela Suriaga, tight end. Lauren J, tight end. Steph McCormick, center. Rachel Washington, running back. Tashe Winfrey, quarterback. This game is going to come down to the arm of Tashe Winfrey. She has to be very accurate tonight to have any shot against this tough secondary. On point there to Michelle Marshall. But look at the defense converge. That is Kristen Morrison, who has been absolutely balling out in the second half of the season. Alberts and Morrison really leading the way for that defense. Let's meet their starters. DeAndre Fry, cornerback. Dominique Collins, cornerback. Ali Alberts, safety. Teresa Petrozello, safety. Kristen Morrison, middle linebacker. Chantel Taylor, your defensive end. Toy Jerome, defensive end. You mentioned it, this team is led by the former MVP middle linebacker, Kristen Morrison. That's gonna be a keeper by Tashe Winfrey, not fooling anyone. Winfrey does manage to get three yards out of the carry. You saw two plays go. They tried the swing play to Michelle Marshall out of the backfield that worked against other teams in the league. That's not going to work tonight with Morrison. She's one of the best cover linebackers in the league. They have to throw vertical passes tonight. Now a vital fourth and seven for this Austin offense. An offense that has seen some success here early in the game. Holding onto the ball for over three minutes. They want to talk it over. We've got an Austin timeout down on the field. We're also going to take a media timeout here from Austin, Texas. In a scoreless early game, Austin's offense looking sharp early, and they are marching back after this.
back to LFL football night. A look at Terry Black's Barbecue, where Bobby and I had a slab last night. I love Terry Black's, man. We need to go back there every year. Love that barbecue. That is part of the culture down here in Austin, Texas. If you haven't tried the barbecue, you're missing out. Now a fourth and seven for this young Austin acoustic team facing a Chicago right. Bliss team that's been in six out of the last eight Legends Cups. That's complete. Michelle Marshall coming through in the clutch. Austin needed seven, they got nine. Great protection for Tashay Winfrey up front. She had all day to find Michelle Marshall coming across. She settled into a hole. It seems like she is the go-to receiver when Winfrey has to come up with a play. Yeah, Marshall's really the late game heroics. We've seen her time and time again in the fourth quarter, but really being mixed in earlier in the game now. Right now, this is a great drive for Austin. Keith Hack not happy with his defense. We're almost halfway through the first quarter, and his offense hasn't touched the ball. Jane Caldwell and company not on the field just yet. Austin stays on the ground. That's Rachel Washington. Great tackle and convergence by Allie Alberts. We met with her earlier. I come in as prepared as I possibly can be for every game. So it's, it's the same thing. I mean, I am a worry wart, so I'm constantly worried. Like, are you ready? Are you ready? Do you know, like, this is the big game where it, like, don't think that we just have this in the bag because that's how you lose the big game. So I think I'm a little bit more on the other girls, like constantly, but that's just because I will do anything to win. This is definitely Allie Albert's finest season as a Chicago Bliss player. And then last week against Nashville in the Eastern Conference Finals, she has a pick six to win the game. What a storybook ending for Allie Alberts in Chicago. And down on the field, we've got another Austin timeout. That is their second and final timeout of the half. You definitely want to do that this early in the game. You might need it to score Empty points right. before halftime. Okay. Empty right, X motion, 34 sweep. All right, run the play and go score. Let's go. That's head coach Mike Oliveira, who also sat down with our own Heidi Golznick. How do you make your team believe when they're going up against a team like the Chicago Bliss? Well, I think we have to start by going back and remembering all the small battles that we've won to get here. We've overcome tons of adversity, and we definitely have what it takes to win the Legends Cup. That is an amazing story. They went from 0-4 to the Legends Cup in their own city here in Austin. An amazing run and turnaround. We talked about it in the pregame show. This Austin acoustic team was winless last season, and here they are in the Legends Cup. They played good football last season, even though they were 0-4. We knew they had potential, and they stepped up this year. That was a jet sweep earlier to Leilani Lopez. They're really trying to utilize more of her speed in this offense, and not just vertically down the field. A third and goal ball to Chicago six. Empty backfield. Crossing pattern deflected. That looked like Toya Jerome got a hand on it. Toya Jerome, she knows how to sink back in coverage. When she sees past a drop back, she puts her hands up. Actually, even if that was completed, Kristen Morrison was going to knock her out. She was waiting for that plant right across the middle. So now, another fourth down conversion. We saw Austin convert the earlier fourth and seven, now facing a fourth and goal from about the six yard line. Receivers flank to the right side, across the middle. And just behind her intended target, Cassandra Bills. Cassandra Bills has not had a great season since she came back from that knee injury. You have to catch this pass. Yeah, it's a little bit behind, but catch the football and you're winning this game. That is a monumental drop. What do you say every week, Bobby Huco? Big players make big plays and big moments. Absolutely, you have to make that catch. That changes the whole complexion of this ball game. Here's our first look at Jane Caldwell and the Chicago offense. Taking over with about 3.50 left in the first quarter. From under center, they're gonna go to Javille Thompson. And Thompson tracked down by Courtney Dowdy and Ana Garza. That is gonna be the game plan for the Chicago offense. I spoke with Dave Mills and Matt Pike. Yeah, they can pass the football, but they really think they can run against this Austin team. Surprisingly, Ana Garza is lining up at defensive end. We'll try to get a report on that. Typically, it's Courtney and Brittany Dowdy. 
So now a second and eight. Ball with the Chicago eight, and the ball comes out. A poor exchange between Caldwell and Thompson. Caldwell simply handed it to the wrong back. In the biggest game of her career, she can't make little mistakes like this. Watch. She's supposed to give the ball to the tailback. She tries to give it to the fullback. They're lucky to get that ball back. Tamika Robinson was not expecting the football. So now a third and nine. This offense facing some adversity early. Jane Caldwell, we've talked about it all year long, wants to become an elite quarterback in the LFL. Well, she's going to have to play better football than that. From under center, Caldwell fakes the handoff. Looking to the left, now pocket collapsing. And that's the mobility of number 15, able to salvage a five-yard gain. That's what Caldwell gives you at quarterback. She is the best running quarterback in the league. There was nothing there in the passing game, and she got positive yardage. Now, here's an interesting decision early for Coach Keith Hack. It's a fourth and four. You're backed up to the 12-yard line. You can punt here. You can punt, but I think that would show respect to Austin. You know Coach Hack. He is a grind-nosed coach. He will go for this, absolutely. Here comes that Austin hometown crowd on a fourth and four handoff to Bill Thompson. And Thompson will pick up the first down, a six-yard carry. Great run by Thompson. She read the block of Brittany Wilson the center and cut the other way. She got the key fourth down yardage. Watch this. Right up the A-gap. She cuts right inside off of Brittany, and there's the six yards for the first down. Thompson has really been given the workload in Chicago. After the trading of Christelle Harris, and Thompson has responded. Christelle Harris last night got the Hall of Fame award. She's on the sideline tonight. A first and 10. They're going to go back to Thompson. Look at the jump cut to the outside. A carry for seven yards for the second year back. Let's meet Chicago's starters. May Gamble, tight end. Brittany Wilson, center. Quincy Hewitt, tight end. Shabria Civilian, wide receiver. Tamika Robinson, wide receiver. JaVale Thompson, running back. Jane Coldwell, quarterback. There is no question for Chicago to win the Legends Cup championship tonight. Quarterback Jane Caldwell has to play mistake-free football. So now a second and three ball at midfield. This is a design keeper by Caldwell. Caldwell using that size and picking up nine yards at five foot seven, 158 pounds. Now let's meet Austin's defensive starters. Marisa Golston, corner. CC McMillan, corner. Ana Garza, safety. Kendry Robinson, strong safety. Brandy Solting, middle linebacker. Courtney Dowdy, defensive end. Brittany Dowdy, defensive end. The key tonight for Austin is the bookends at defensive end. Brittany Dowdy and Courtney Dowdy have to collapse that pocket and put pressure on Caldwell. The final play of the first quarter, a first and 10 from the 16, overshooting her target, Quincy Hewitt. And we've seen Hewitt become a much bigger target in this offense. Watch this pressure by Courtney Dowdy getting to Caldwell, throwing off her timing. She couldn't get the ball to Hewitt. That will bring us to the end of the first quarter in Legends Cup 2018, a game that many thought Chicago would rout Austin, but the acoustic proving they belong. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night, the top of the second quarter. We went scoreless through the first 10 minutes of play. Now Jane Caldwell in the Chicago offense out on the field. Chicago right now, they're in shock. If Cassandra Bills makes that catch, they're winning the football game right now. Second and 10. Ball at the Austin 16-yard line. That's Hallie Jiskra in motion. They're going to go the other direction with May Gamble, the left side tight end. May Gamble, she's got short area quickness. I talked to offensive coordinator Dave Mills. They're going to feature her a little bit more because even though she's almost 6'1", she can run the football. That was a six-yard carry by May Gamble, setting up a third and four. And you mentioned it, Bobby. Had Cassandra Bills come up with that score, Austin would be on top. Here's Caldwell, another design keeper. They're going to try the right side. 
right at CC McMillan. But that was Brittany Dowdy getting to the edge. Every time we talk about CC McMillan on the corner, watch her stand up the receiver. Receiver's trying to do a stock block. She just stands her up. There's nowhere for Caldwell to go. The pursuit with Dowdy comes over and makes the play. This Austin defense really upgraded with size this past offseason. Bringing in Courtney and Brittany Dowdy has helped them against the run and also applying pressure to the quarterback. The Dowdy sisters really picked up their game. They might be most improved players on Austin since early in the season. A fourth and one carry back to Thompson. And Thompson churning those legs. Still going. Kendra Robinson has her held up. It is uncanny how she finds a way and finds holes to get in the end zone. Watch this. Well, hold on a second. Is this a score? What's or that? was the whistle blown? Here's Javel Thompson being held up what felt like an eternity. Yet they're still allowing her to advance the ball, and they're going to give Chicago a score here. I believe the Austin defense heard a whistle in the crowd and stopped. The play was not blown dead. The result of the play is a touchdown. Head referee Terry Falgott and crew are going to give the score to Chicago. Unbelievable. He blew a goddamn fucking whistle. He blew the fucking whistle. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not sure if it was a whistle or a buzzer from the crowd. Something went off, and the Austin defense stopped. Javel Thompson kept her legs going and scored a touchdown. Austin has really had opportunities going back to the Bills drop in right there. That should have been stopped, although it would have been a first and goal for Chicago. Always play through the whistle, but I think that was a buzzer from the crowd. Now the two-point attempt by Chicago. That's Robinson in motion. Caldwell on the quarterback keeper stopped. A great open field tackle by Marissa Goldston. Great pursuit by Goldson coming off the edge to stop Caldwell. But again, we say it every week. Why don't you go for one point instead of two? Every week, now it's only a 6-0 lead. That was a nine-play, 44-yard drive, taking up 529. You always hear play through the echo of the whistle. Right there, it cost Austin points. Even though they heard something, they should, still should have tackled Thompson. Let's see if this Austin offense can maintain its momentum. In the first quarter, it mounted a 10-play drive. Now a first and 10 from the 15. Back to pass is Winfrey, checking down and nearly intercepted by Teresa Petrozulo. Petrozulo is a ball magnet, always around the ball, one of the top safeties in the LFL. Now we just saw a flag come in extremely late. Early indication is this may be on Chicago. Coach Keith Hack, just as curious as we are. Delay of game, 18 Chicago. So they're going to call it delay a game on just Teresa Petrozulo. Delay a game, just threw the ball away. What? She didn't catch she, the she, ball. She didn't catch okay, it. I'm just telling you what he told me. She didn't catch. Excuse me, sir. She didn't catch the ball. So how? She, she didn't catch it. She can't kick it down the field. Yeah, they're well, going to say Teresa Petrozulo did not give the ball to can the we official, not call the, and can in we fact not kicked call it down the field. Things, please. Are you fucking kidding me? Delay of game, 18. It's a dead ball foul. Second down. I agree with Coach Hack on that one. In a championship game, you don't make a tactic call like that. It wasn't flagrant. First and five, big pressure by Kristen Morrison. And now to Shea Winfrey in the open field. An 18-yard carry by Winfrey. Winfrey is simply a warrior. Watch this, she breaks the pressure, she takes off. Watch her speed. Now, Kristen Morrison can fly, and she barely gets to her with a shoestring tackle. The ball down all the way to the Chicago 12-yard line. Holding number 12 defense. That penalty will be declined. There's up play. You guys down. call a bullshit to land, Dave. What kind of fucked up call is that? What kind of fucked up call is that? Who gives a fuck? What about a warning? You realize what league this is? Chicago Blitz head coach Keith Hack still lobbying the previous delay a game by Teresa Petrozulo. I watched Petrozulo. It was not flagrant at all. She barely touched the ball, but they call it. First and 10 handoff. This is Bills. 
We typically do not see Bills line up in the backfield. That would be a carry of four yards. Well, Bills has that blazing speed, but she made one mistake. She ran right into number seven. Number seven, Kristen Morrison, can play on Sunday. On the Austin side, these offensive weapons are very interchangeable. When you think of Leilani Lopez, Michelle Marshall, Kendra Robinson, and Cassandra Bills. They're all great athletes. They're trying to use Bill's speed in the backfield. That last play did not work. A second and six. As the clock continues to wind down, Winfrey taking a lot of time, and there you go. That's going to be a delay a game on Austin. That's a rookie mistake by Tashe Winfrey. Delay the game. Number 10, Austin. The clock Take is right in front of her. She has to look at that every time she goes up to the line of scrimmage. That's another criticism of Tashe Winfrey. Her game situational awareness is not the greatest in the league. You can make that mistake in the first game of the season, but not in the Legends Cup. That's been one of the knocks on Tashe Winfrey. Her lack of game situational awareness. Second and 11, ball at the Chicago 13. From the shotgun, a screen pass. That's Brittany Dowdy. Dowdy using that size. A four yard completion, that defense really came up. Michael Oliveira told me he's gonna use both Dowdy sisters in the offense because he thinks Chicago's gonna be focusing on their three top receivers. They have, these girls are both 6'1 and can play and catch the football and make some yardage. They might be the secret weapons they need tonight. Yeah, standing at six foot one, 172 pounds, and that is all muscle for both Brittany Dowdy and Courtney Dowdy. A third and seven, Austin can still pick up a first down inside the two. From the shotgun, a crossing pattern. Poorly thrown by Winfrey into coverage. I am shocked Allie Alberts is still not running the other way. Winfrey was simply late on the throw. It was a release pattern. Dowdy was open quick. It was a late throw, and then Dowdy slipped. You're right, Allie Alberts usually has that ball going the other way. This will be the third, fourth down that this offense has faced here in the first half. A fourth and seven ball at the Chicago nine yard line. And this is where Tashe Winfrey can really earn her stripes. Ball at the nine of Chicago from the shotgun. Morrison up the middle. Winfrey had no chance and that'll be a turnover on downs. Kristen Morrison, she is ubiquitous tonight all over the field. Seems to bleed every play. What a clutch play on fourth down and seven. She makes a sack like that, wow. So that is two trips inside the red zone for that Austin offense and no points to show for it. Winfrey and company missing out on a golden opportunity. As Chicago will take over on downs, we'll take a media timeout. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Listen to me carefully. This is a simple matter of execution because the shit's fucking there. I got people wide open. So let's execute. Now, on the next series, we got to pick them apart and go into a two-minute offense. We have to score in this half, okay? I don't care if I go 50-50 and get a quick shot, okay? This is the game right here. This is the this game. Is the fucking game right you drive here. it down and score. This is everything this drive. This is Back to LFL football night as we listen into both sidelines. And I think both understand the urgency that goes with this series. Absolutely. For Austin, twice now, with the Bills catch, the miss catch, and then that buzzer in the audience, two bad breaks. First and ten. Caldwell, again calling her own number. A 17-yard carry by the Aussie quarterback. It's amazing how elusive she is. Dowdy has her right there in the backfield. Should have been a sack. She gets away, she hugs blockers, and makes a huge gain out of nothing. Every week, in and out, she does it. Jane Caldwell's the best running quarterback in the league. You see right there, she has seven touchdowns, 171 yards. They're going to win this game on her running, not lose it by her passing. So a first and 10 after that 17-yard run by Caldwell. That's Tamika Robinson. 
We've got a delay a game. Chicago with a lot of motion and shifting and not enough time on the play clock. Delay of game, 15, Chicago. Five yard penalty, first down. Jane Caldwell making another rookie mistake. And I noticed she looked back at the play clock and it's a cardinal sin for a quarterback to look back at a play clock because you have one right in front of you. Always look toward where you're going and it cost her time right there. So that'll back up the offense five yards. Set him up at the 21 yard line. Chicago looking good early, six to nothing. Although Austin certainly has had its opportunities. That's Shabria Civilian in motion, making Javil Thompson crossing pattern. In and out of the hands of Hallie Jiskra. Jiskra should have had that ball right there. Anna Garza, we talked about her in the pregame. She's all over the field. She has those oily hips you like DBs to have. She was right with her, just her on that play, but just her still should have caught the ball. How about the versatility of Anna Garza? Only 5'2", 120. Now lining up at the middle linebacker position. Second and 15, ball at the 21. From the shotgun. Nowhere near her intended target. That looked like it was intended for Shabria Civilian. Trevillian wide open on the break. Caldwell way late on listen, the pass. Listen. I want the exact same thing. I want you to flip it. Flip it. Shabria's wide open. You could see that was intended for Shabria Civilian, just missing her target. Wide open. The timing wasn't there. Going to try the exact same play on the other side. Let's see if Caldwell can hit it. I'm sometimes curious as to who the offensive coordinator is. In the books is Dave Mills, but you see there Keith Hack making the call. Third and 15, a lot of time in the pocket. And finding her receiver this time, indeed complete to Shabria Civilian. Thank God that Caldwell got great protection because she was way late again, but she had the time for, to wait for Sabrillian to come across to find the opening across the field. So they got most of that yardage back, but they're gonna need four more yards here on a fourth and four. You can see Dave Mills and company, including head coach Keith Hack, looking over that playbook. As always though, the offensive coordinator can make the call, but the head coach can override it. Right now, Keith Hack is calling this offense. And we've got a stoppage in play here. It appears they're gonna call a timeout in Chicago. Chicago. That's smart, you've got a pair of timeouts. This is a vital drive, you wanna talk Listen, it over. They have number one playing fucking nose guard. Listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. We're gonna run, we're gonna run 14 straight at him. Straight at him. We are going on two. Going on two. May, we're going on two, all right? Coach Keith Hack trying to take advantage of Anna Garza playing nose tackle right now. He's calling this one on two on the snap count. They're gonna try to get Garza to jump. We'll see if this Austin defense can show some discipline here. 2.02 remaining and no. That is Courtney Dowdy. That wasn't even close. That should be enough for Chicago first down. Offsides, Austin. Got the reserves on the first down. You really got to hand it to head coach Keith Hack. Using the cadence as a weapon, both Dowdy sisters jumped. That'll set up a first and 10 now. Make it a first and goal at about the five yard line. A full backfield set here. They're going to go back to Javel Thompson. Thompson getting cracked by Kendria Robinson. That is the one player on the acoustic team you better block. Nobody blocked her. She is dangerous. She can light you up like she just did. Kendria Robinson on a big stop against Javel Thompson. That will officially bring us to the two-minute warning. Chicago up six to nothing. Back to LFL football night in Austin, Texas. One of many food trucks down on 6th Street. And inside, we've got an incredible Legends Cup brewing. The Chicago Bliss and the Austin Acoustic. Chicago up six to nothing. That was second and goal. That's Shabria Civilian in motion. Handoff, Quincy Hewitt. Not fooled, Kendria Robinson. Playing possessed on this side of the ball. 
I got a question to staff of Chicago. Dennis DiBiase, the line coach, again, they did not block Kendria Robinson, the top defensive player on the team, and she makes another outstanding play. Third and goal. This would be quite the goal line stand if this Austin defense can deliver. I am really impressed with the Austin defense tonight. Right now, 6 nothing, and it really shouldn't be 6 nothing. They only got the points because of that bogus whistle in the crowd. So now a third and goal as Jane Caldwell talks it over with the sideline and now electing to call their final timeout of the half. Timeout, Chicago. Second final timeout of the half. That's a smart timeout by quarterback Jane Caldwell. Right now, there's a lot of confusion on the Chicago sideline. Only a minute 15 left in the half. Make sure it's right. Listen, get fucking tight and fucking man up, goddammit. Push. Keith Hack, that is the game plan. He doesn't care about any passing tonight. He just wants his offensive line to blow out the defensive line of Austin. Chicago certainly has the size up front with May Gamble, Brittany Wilson, and Quincy Hewitt. Caldwell looking over that Austin defense. They're gonna stay in the ground. That's Javel Thompson. Thompson into the end zone for a Chicago touchdown. Brittany Dowdy for Austin. Great swim technique over May Gamble to get in the backfield. She just couldn't close the deal and make the tackle on Thompson. Thompson always finds the end zone. Javel Thompson really comfortable in this offense now. We've seen Tamika Robinson in the backfield. Shabria Civilian at times line up in the backfield, but their go-to back, without question, is Javel Thompson. Now the two-point attempt. Another poor exchange between Jane Caldwell and Thompson. That's just a basic handoff right there. Eye formation, that's twice now. Caldwell couldn't get Thompson the ball. That's got to be a concern if you're Chicago. And again, Austin very much so in the game, only down 12 to nothing after a seven play, 33 yard drive by Chicago that ate up 341 on the clock. Chicago head coach Keith Hack came in with a conservative game plan. Hardly any passing at all, just pound it out, go behind your line, let Thompson have the ball and score points. They're only up by two touchdowns, but that's Hack football. Not a lot of confidence in the arm of Jane Caldwell to this point. First and 10, Winfrey throwing again at the feet of a receiver, this time intended for Cassandra Bills. We knew going into this game, this game was on Winfrey's shoulders. She had to be her sharpest ever tonight, and right now she's not. That was a basic pass, not even close to Bills. You gotta wonder how much of that is nerves. Second and 10, ball at the 15. Looking downfield, now checking down to Marshall. An 11-yard completion, that'll stop the clock as well. That's it to Shea Winfrey we need to see tonight. Really accurate pass right on the numbers to Marshall. She needs to continue doing this. Made a great read, great progression, great throw. First and 10, ball to Chicago 24. Keep in mind, Austin has no timeouts remaining, but plenty of time with 58.2 seconds. An empty backfield, quick screen, caught. That's Lopez, breaking through arm tackles and smartly getting out of bounds. A nine yard completion to the shifty wide receiver. That was all Leilani Lopez. Winfrey again, not active, this ball's way behind. You're supposed to lead the receiver, she throws it way behind, great catch by Lopez. Then she cuts it back outside after breaking a tackle by Kristen Morrison of all people. Wow, great play by Lopez. DeAndre Fry forcing out Lopez. Ball now at the 15 yard line. Winfrey back to pass, climbing up in the pocket and completing the Lopez. They're gonna have to start showing some urgency here as Austin does not have any timeouts. I like the way Winfrey climbed up in the pocket, created time and then hit Lopez. There's a lot of time for this offense. Here we go, they're moving the football, but they'll get in the red zone. Let's see what they can do. The clock winds up again. We are under 40 seconds remaining. That's Marshall in motion. Designed keeper by Winfrey, and she cannot get out of bounds. They gotta get on this ball and kill it. I'm not sure about that call by Michael Oliveira at all right there. That's just grinding a lot of clock off right now. They should be throwing it. We are now under 20 seconds, and Winfrey does kill the clock with 14.5 remaining. 
That's enough time to take a couple shots to the end zone. Absolutely. They, they blew off like 20 seconds right there on that run by Winfrey. Yeah, she can run, but she doesn't have the speed to break away and score against this fast defense. Third and goal. This Austin offense will have two more opportunities at the end zone. Obviously, they cannot pick up a first down, so they've got to score here. This is usually Michelle Marshall territory. She has a way to get open. Let's see if they go that way. Marshall flanked to the right side of Winfrey in the backfield. Lopez and Bills at the bottom of your screen. An ugly looking pass. I'm not sure if that was meant to be a shovel pass to Marshall. That'll fall incomplete, at least it stops the clock. It's a broken play. She decides to run too quick. She has time, and now she tries to make something out of nothing and a bad pitch to Marshall. So now, it comes down to a final play for this Austin offense, a fourth and goal from the nine. To Shea Winfrey trying to run too much. She has time to throw the ball, stay in the pocket. Here it is, fourth and goal, empty backfield. From the shotgun, crossing pattern, that's complete. Steph McCormick, she does get out of bounds, but that will not be enough as Chicago holds for a third straight time in the red zone. As a quarterback, you gotta make smart decisions. There's no way their center is gonna break free from Kristen Morrison. It's not gonna happen. She had number three, Cassandra Bills running across the back of the end zone, didn't even look at her. Yeah, Tashay Winfrey has not had a great first half in the Legends Cup. Some say this is her final game with Austin. Perhaps some of the nerves and emotion getting the best of number 10. She's going to have to have the second half of her career to beat Chicago. So 1.1 seconds. What do you do here if you're Keith Hack and company? It looks like they're going to go aggressive. I don't think Caldwell has the arm to go to length of the field. Probably something conservative. Indeed, they're going to go underneath. That's Robinson. Robinson in the open field does not have the speed as Kendria Robinson will push her out. That'll bring us to the end of the first half with Chicago up 12 to nothing. Let's go down to the field. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with defensive stud of the Austin Acoustic, Kendria Robinson. Kendria, you guys are down 12 in the second half. What is it going to take to mount a rally? I mean, we just got to continue doing what we're doing on defense, you know. We just got to make some tackles, you know, come up with some big plays, get a stop or two in our offense. They're going to show up this next half, and I have, you know, no confidence that we're going to move that ball well, you know, get the pass game going better. All right, best of luck in the second half. Back to you guys. That is Kendria Robinson, who, along with Ana Garza, were the only defensive studs that showed up for Austin. For Chicago, it was Jabil Thompson on runs of seven and four yards that has Chicago up 12 to nothing. For Tashay Winfrey and Austin, they certainly had their opportunities. Could not get anything on the board after three visits to the red zone. Back with halftime coverage after this. Everything that we've done to this point, if you put the ball the way inside the five and 10, those are points being left on the field. I told you before the game started that we need to help our defense. We dropped one in the end zone. We fucking drove the field twice with nothing. And they go back out and battle their fucking asses off to get us the ball back, and we come away with zero. But now you're behind the eight ball. They get the ball back, okay? So we need to score quickly. We're going to go no huddle. I got a couple things I'm going to give you, but we're going to go no huddle. Yeah. What is going on on the extra point? Is your hand okay? Left and hold on to the fucking ball. All right? I don't give a fuck. 12 points, two botched extra points. All right? We need to convert on every fucking possession. Are you all right? Yes or no? Simple yes or no. If you're hurt, don't play, Britt. It's okay. Really. All right? All right? We, won't, we don't want you out there if you can't, if you're, if you're hurt, sweetheart. A pair of intense locker rooms as we welcome you back to LFL football night here at halftime. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. And we saw the first half, really that Chicago defense pitching a shutout with a 12 to nothing score. Now I ask you, Bobby Huco, we knew Chicago's defense was stout coming in, but did you expect them to have the kind of success they're having against a very explosive offense? I really did, especially against the run game. I knew they could shut that down, but the high octane pass game of Austin, they shut it completely down. Somehow they have to get the ball to Leilani Lopez. She wasn't a factor in the first half. To have any chance of winning this game, Lopez has to catch more balls. 
And for Chicago, the answer has really been Javel Thompson and Jane Caldwell, both having career games in the first half of play. Really impressed by Jane Caldwell, the quarterback. In her biggest game ever, she showed up tonight, solid first half. And of course, Javel Thompson, as always, six rushes, 26 yards, and two touchdowns in the first half. Yeah, Thompson accounted for both of those scores on runs of seven and four yards. That brings us to our halftime score of 12 to nothing, Chicago in the lead. Let's look at those halftime stats. Chicago and Austin played evenly. What stands out the most is Austin's offense only converted one out of four fourth downs. They have to pick up first downs, extend drives, and score points in the second half. Austin certainly has the weapons to crawl back into this game. Who will be their hero? Let's find out. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night, the Legends Cup. As we look at our first half impact players. For Chicago, Kristen Morrison, four solo tackles and a sack. And for Austin, Kenria Robinson with five and a half tackles. Let's go down to the field. Thanks, guys. I'm with the happy Jane Caldwell as we begin to start the third quarter. Jane, you guys are up 12 to nothing, but this Austin team is known as a second half team. How do you keep from becoming overconfident? Uh, I wouldn't say we're overconfident. We're actually, we feel like we're losing right now. We're not playing bliss ball. We didn't execute in the first half. So I feel like if we go in the second half and we just execute, we continue playing bliss ball, then we'll have no problems at all. Thanks, Jane. Back to you guys for the final 20 minutes of football. Yeah, Chicago can't be happy with that first half on offense. Yeah, they're winning the football game, but the offense really not doing a whole lot. Jane Caldwell's passing stats from the first half, not very impressive, only two of four. Frankly, they didn't ask much of her. Well, that was the game plan. They didn't want to throw interceptions against Austin when they think they can physically out man to man them and just plow over them. So a first and 10, Chicago opening up from its own 15 yard line. Javille Thompson, the star of the first half in the backfield, setting up the option. But Caldwell electing to keep it herself. That'll be a gain of four yards. That's the first time they tried that all night long, straight down the line option. Nothing there, good defense, Caldwell had nothing. She got positive yards, but no big break. Yeah, that's the upside with Caldwell. Even falling forward, she's gonna pick up a couple yards for you. So she gives you that run threat option. Again, if you think back, Caldwell was a starting running back in this league with the Atlanta Steam. Well, she's got great escapability. She can make positive yards. A low snap back to Caldwell. A second and six. Brittany and Courtney Dowdy make a Jane Caldwell sandwich. Nothing there for Caldwell. Watch the Dowdy sisters coming out of nowhere around the edge. Both of them, luckily Caldwell did not get injured on this. Both of them right on her back. That was a loss of six, setting up a third and 12. So this Austin defense looking impressive out of the gate here in the third quarter. Absolutely, that's almost 400 pounds that landed on top of Caldwell. A third and 12, ball at the 13. They're gonna go back to the ground. That's Javille Thompson. Thompson limited to a five yard carry. That Austin defense really attacking now. Michael Oliveira at halftime, he mentioned to his defense, listen, we're down two scores. Chicago gets the ball first. Don't let them score. We cannot go down by three touchdowns. Another interesting call. Chicago cannot punt because the ball's over the 15-yard line. Do you get a delay a game here, back it up, and punt the ball away, or do you go for it here? At some point in the game, to win the championship, Caldwell's going to have to complete some passes. Here comes that Austin hometown crowd. A fourth and seven. And Chicago smartly I'm electing out. to call a timeout. Chicago. First timeout. An early timeout for Chicago here in the second half. We will take a break as well. When Jane Caldwell returns to action, she will face a fourth down against a fierce Austin defense. Back after this. Back to LFL football night and more Austin flavor as we bring you back to Legends Cup 2018 and a crucial fourth down here for Jane Caldwell in this offense. This might be the play of the year for Caldwell right now. If Austin makes a stop, they're back in this game. Here comes that hometown crowd again. 
A little release. That was to Quincy Hewitt. Well short of the sticks. A much needed stop for this Austin defense as their offense will take over. I'm not sure about this read for Caldwell. You go to Hewitt for one yard, covered like a blanket by Garza, when you have Tamika Robinson cutting behind, flying across the field with speed. And say what you will about the five foot two, 120 pound Anna Garza, but she has the heart of a lion. Just look at her numbers from the first half. A great first half for Garza. I really like the way she reads. She attacks. She knows how to make the read right there. She saw it was going to be a pass to Hewitt. She jumped all over it. So now to Shea Winfrey and this offense. Great field position inside the 19 of Chicago. Wide open. Courtney Dowdy. Touchdown, Austin. Boom goes the dynamite. What a call by Mike Oliveira. They came with a corner blitz. And what does he do? He sneaks Dowdy out in the flat. Watch this read by Tashay Winfrey. There's nobody out there. And then Allie Alberts knows what it's like to tackle a cement truck. Watch this. Bam! Unbelievable play for Austin. They are back in it. That is the ignite switch this offense needed. And who would have thought it would have come from Courtney Dowdy? To this point, Leilani Lopez, Listen, Michelle Marshall. If we cannot fucking run on Anna Garza, we need to get the fuck out of the game. That's Coach Keith Hack saying that Anna Garza should be blown up going back to when he was on defense. This is the extra point attempt with Michelle Marshall. You know, I love the decision-making personnel most of the time from Mike Oliveira. Then he makes a call like that that's just a head-scratcher. Offsides, 19, Chicago. Ability to enforce half the distance of goal. Retry. Chantel Taylor, she jumped. They're going to have another shot, but I agree. That's not your money player to get points. No, if you're down inside the two, line up a Courtney Dowdy in the backfield. Or a Rachel Washington, at least. Michelle Marshall is not as physical. You need physical down here by the goal line. Absolutely. Even the quarterback, Tashay Winfrey, she's big and tough. She can get your yardage. So here it is. This is still a two-point attempt, even though the ball's at the one. Handoff, Rachel Washington loses it, but she crossed the plane. That will give Austin two points and make this a four-point game. Watch the jump cut. She follows the block of Brittany Dowdy. Watch this, boom, jumps around her, and then gets through the block, crosses the plane, gets the points on the board. How about the wherewithal of Rachel Washington, knowing she was near the goal line, extending the ball over for a much needed two point conversion. There is no way head coach Keith Hack thought at this point in the game in the third quarter, he would only be up five points on Austin. No, in fact, quarterbacks coach Matt Pike said we might put up a hundred on him today. Not even close. That's Javille Thompson. This Austin defense is firing on all cylinders right now. I don't think I've seen him play this emotional or intense all season. This defense and this crowd, they are into it right now. Anna Garza, she's only 5'2", 128. She is definitely an overachiever. Look at this, get into play. Right now, Keith Hack cannot believe number one at 5'2", is making plays like this. That was a four-yard carry by Thompson, second and six. From the pocket, a lot of time. Caldwell completing. That is the pass we've been looking for from Caldwell all night. A 26-yard connection with Tamika Robinson. We said Jane Caldwell had to complete some passes. This is perfect. Robinson running all across the field in the corner. You cannot place that ball any better. What a throw by Caldwell. That was a back-breaking completion after Austin had all the momentum. Tamika Robinson has become Caldwell's go-to receiver this season, right there, 13 receptions. Without A.J. Johnson in the lineup, she's not playing this year. Tamika Robinson has stepped up. Now a first and goal. They're going to go back to Thompson. And they're really ISOing and keying on Thompson is that Austin defense. A great tackle by Kendria Robinson. Again, this game plan on the offensive line of Chicago, they're not blocking Kendria Robinson, the number one player on that defense. That's asking for trouble. She shows up again and makes a great play. You can see Robinson's numbers 
I mean, she has been a ball hawk all over the runners all night. The offensive coaches, when you make a game plan, you have to try to neutralize the top defensive player. They're not even blocking her. This is a second and goal. Jade Caldwell. Touchdown, Chicago. Give Caldwell credit. When she needed to make the big completion to Robinson, she did. And down here on the goal line, she's very confident in her mobility. Jane Caldwell telling Austin, yippee ki -yay. here you go, defense. What an answer. After Austin came back with that big touchdown, Caldwell throws the length of the field, and then there's a boot action, confuses everybody, and takes it in for six. So Chicago electing to go for a two-point conversion here after a four-play, 35-yard drive. That took up two minutes and two seconds. Toss left, Thompson. Thompson cutting it back across the field. A very impressive run by number six. She had such a great suddenness. Right there, there was nothing there going to the left. She just stopped, planted, went the other side of the field, and had the speed to get outside and get in. So Chicago answering that drive by Austin, namely on the feet and arm of Jane Caldwell. It's up to Tashay Winfrey right now. She has to answer herself right now to stop from going down three scores. She looked good on that first drive. Let's see if she can do it again. Here's where you're tested as a young quarterback. This is only the third year for Tashay Winfrey. She's down 12 in the Legends Cup. First and 10 from the 15. Winfrey pump faking, rolling right, checking down. That's Leilani Lopez. That'll be a two yard completion. That's okay, she went down, she went down the food chain, nothing open deep. I'm gonna tell you what, this secondary of Chicago, the safeties, Teresa Petrozolo and Allie Alberts, they're shutting down that deep passing game. A pair of the best safeties in the LFL. Petrozolo signed as a free agent from the Omaha Heart. And Allie Alberts, of course, has been with this franchise for a number of years, playing in her final LFL game tonight. 5-0-5 and counting in the third quarter. This is a second and eight play, busted play. As Winfrey tries to create something with her legs, will gain three yards. Teresa Petrozillo, she saw the run right there. She came flying up. She got help from Chantel Taylor. Chantel Taylor's just been a beast her entire career. Third and five. A very manageable third down situation here for this offense. And at some point, they've got to take another shot down the field. We haven't seen hardly any of that tonight. They have to go to Marshall or Leilani Lopez deep. Absolutely. Third and five. That was going to set up a crossing pattern. I believe that was intended for Michelle Marshall. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Great play by Chantel Taylor. That ball was there. That was open. Michelle Marshall would have got the first down. Fourth and five. Austin cannot punt as they are beyond the 15-yard line. I come back with that same play. The safeties were deep. Marshall found the opening, hooked up. It was wide open. Winfrey looking over that defense. Another empty back set. And that looked like the right tight end. Aubrey Williams. False start. 18. Austin. Five yard penalty. Four down. That is a back breaking penalty in a fourth and five position. Now you have to throw the ball deeper. You're right. You can't make that mistake in the second half on fourth down. Now Mike Oliveira signaling he wants a timeout. Timeout. Austin. Hey, come here. Now, here's the problem. Look, I can fucking call any number of routes that I want, but it's not going to matter if we don't give her time. Okay? She's wide open. Now. All I need from you in 50 is to attack her and keep her hands down. They're wide open. Hey, She's one on one because we're in man hey. coverage. Look at the sticks where we gotta go. If you don't think you can get it, listen to me. If you don't think you can get it, then curl up by the sticks and we can hit it. It's all you, okay? I love that call by Mike Oliveira. Going to your bread and butter receiver, Leilani Lopez, one on one. It's like go out there and win. And he also told his offensive line to cut the defensive ends so they don't block the quick release of Tashay Winfrey. Yeah, that front three is very lanky for Chicago. Here we go, fourth and 10. Throwing it down the seam and overshooting her target. Leilani Lopez had steps behind that defense. 
Chicago came with a safety blitz. Teresa Petrozillo right there, putting heat on to Shea Winfrey. If Winfrey lets the ball a little bit higher, put some air under it, that's six points. She made the right read to Lopez. Couldn't get the ball there, though. Shut. Oh, you could see Petrozillo come in high on Winfrey. That could have drawn a flag. Nonetheless, that Bliss defense gets the stop and an opportunity to really extend their lead here. That blitz worked. It threw off the timing by Winfrey. First and 10, Caldwell dialing up her own number again. An eight yard carry. Why not? If it's working, you gotta continue to go to it. Absolutely. That second half, I'm gonna tell you what, that halftime speech by Keith Hag must have worked. This is a different Jane Caldwell. She looks like a quarterback that wants to win a championship the way she's playing right now. And what I've said time and time again in our broadcasts all season, I am shocked that no one ever spies Jane Caldwell. How many times has she got to prove that she can beat you with her legs? That's what's happening right now. You're 100% right. If they spy her, she doesn't make that big game. Second and two, toss left. Javille Thompson, she needed two, got three. That's Courtney Dowdy on the tackle. Great lead block by Quincy Hewitt. She actually took out two Austin defenders, pushed them back like 10 yards, and behind her, Thompson came for a big game. That'll set up now a first and goal as Thompson is clearly limping. That could be a big loss for this offense. Ball inside the four yard line. So you look to see if they keep it on the ground here or look to maybe a release play to Quincy Hewitt or May Gamble. Caldwell under center, full backfield. That's gonna go to Thompson. Look at the tackle. That time, Brittany Dowdy shooting out from that right DN position. I thought that was six points. She closed down so quick off the edge. Holding, 13 Chicago, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. That is a holding call on Hallie Jiskra. Jiskra, a recently signed free agent this season coming over from the Green Bay Chill where she played for a number of years. That's a huge call right there against Chicago. Inside the red zone, a holding call to bring him back. They're almost the shortest score points without that call. So now they're backed up. First and goal to the 14 yard line. That's Shabria Civilian in motion. Inside handoff, that's Quincy Hewitt. And Hewitt getting into the end zone. Holding number nine, Chicago. Senior Are you lead. fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? They're gonna get Chicago for a holding call. Let's get another look at this. There's May Gamble. She's hooked right there. I'm not sure that's a hold or not. I think that's a great seal block. I don't see the hold. That is a bear hug. Well, it's a seal block and a bear hug. <laughs> that was a blatant bear hug by May Gamble. So now that Chicago offense is going backwards. I think if she keeps her hands in, I think her hand just had to be there. I don't think it was holding, but it was wrapped around. Just two plays earlier, it was first and goal inside the four yard line. Now it's first and goal at the 24 yard line. Caldwell back to pass. Everybody covered and Caldwell goes down. Brittany and Courtney Dowdy are playing out of their minds here in the third quarter. If this is what I think it is, I don't think I'm gonna agree with this. Personal foul, close line tackle, defense. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Now this is interesting. Let's get another look at this. There is no way, Bounty comes through, right there, she grabs it, looks like it might be a horse collar, but comes around with the other arm and then throws her down. That is completely legal. Back to action. A first and goal nearly intercepted by Kendria Robinson. The Dowdy sisters again come up with some serious heat on Jane Caldwell. Here she comes. Caldwell throws it out there. Nobody's open. Robinson almost steals it. Yeah, going back to that clothesline tackle, I don't think that was a clothesline tackle. It absolutely was not, and that changed the whole complexion of this game. It took the crowd out of it. That was a huge play for Austin. They should not make that call. Second and 10, empty backfield. Caldwell going over the middle, throwing into traffic. That was well defensed by Marissa Goldston. 
And we've got another penalty now. Early indication is this is on Austin as well. I don't like face. this. What to the face? That's Keith Hack saying that was a hand to the face. They're going to call Chris Daniels, it looks like, number 11. He needs to pass an appearance. Number 11, defense. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Chicago getting another break. I don't think this was interference. I think she's playing the ball. Caldwell's got time in the pocket, coming across. She throws it up there. Defender has the same right to the ball as the receiver. That is not pass interference. Yeah, I thought from my live look up here in the booth that Chris Daniels got there a little early. From the replay, you could see clearly both Daniels and Tamika Robinson making a play at the ball. Her eyes were on the football. Another bad call. Second and three, toss. That's Javel Thompson. That hole closed up real quickly. Marissa Goldston on the tackle. You got to hand it to Goldston and Robinson right there making a key tackle. They could have faded after those two bad calls by the ref, but they came in to stop Thompson. And it looks like Thompson's back to being healthy. We saw her limping after that tackle by Courtney Dowdy. Thompson's really been the ace for Chicago in this Legends Cup. She's been the entire football game. Caldwell had a couple great plays here in the second half, but other than that, it's been all Thompson. So here we go. First and goal inside the two-yard line. Full backfield. Robinson and Thompson. That's Thompson. Wasn't even contested up the middle. Touchdown, Bliss. I love the way she reads blocks. She went off of May Gamble's block, and she, whatever way the block went, she went the other way, almost walked in the end zone. Thompson really stepping well into that number one back roll. And that front line, give them some credit. Hallie Jiskra, Quincy Hewitt, and May Gamble. Good push that time up the middle. Well, that was the game plan. There's no way the Chicago coaches thought that Austin's defensive line could manhandle their offensive line. This is a two-point attempt. Did Thompson make it over the goal line? Yes. They're going to give her the conversion. This is all Thompson. She has two defenders right there completely stopping her. Somehow she breaks through both of them, and one of them, Kendry Robinson, pulls her into the end zone. So now it's a 28-8 ball game. Still nearly 11 minutes of football remain. Ken Tashe Winfrey in this offense, mount a rally. I just hate in big games like this where the officials come in and make bad calls. That pass intended for Leilani Lopez. And it's been that kind of night for Lopez dropping this pass. They completely took Lopez out of the game. She usually does not make this kind of a drop. She hasn't been able to catch a football all night. She was open on a deep one, but Tashe Winfrey couldn't get her the ball. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter from Legends Cup 2018, where Tashe Winfrey and Austin now are in desperation mode, trailing this one 28 to eight. And why? Because of Jane Caldwell, Tamika Robinson, and Javille Thompson. Back after this. When your number is called tonight, step up and make a name for yourself. Speak about all the people who doubt you, who say you can't, and go prove them wrong. This is not about who left this team. It's not about who came back. It's about who's here right now. Now we have to play like we've never played before, ladies. This isn't just football. This is family, sisterhood. It's your life. It's how you live your life. Look to the girl next to you and fight for your life. Fight for the girl who's sitting next to you in this huddle right now. This is all meant to be. Every single one of you is here tonight because of a purpose. We can do this. I know we can. This is the last time that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to let you down because I will not do it again. Let them understand that we are not here to play games with them. This is our game. Give it everything you have because all we got is 10 minutes. That's all we got. Back for the final 10 minutes in Legends Cup 2018. Austin trailing it big, 28 to eight. We spoke about it at halftime. I really think the story of the game so far is they've shut down the vertical passing game of Austin. It's non-existent right now. They're gonna have to rely on it a lot here in the fourth quarter. 
Ball at the 15. Here comes the blitz. Winfrey avoids Petrozulo and completes it. That is possibly the best play we've seen from Winfrey all night. An eight-yard connection with Leilani Lopez, and now Lopez slowing getting up. That's not a good sign for Austin. You need her in the fourth quarter. I hope that's not serious. Winfrey right here. Here comes Petrozulo. She finds Lopez out there. It looks like she just got caught up against the side, and her foot went underneath. And that could have been a blow to the head by DeAndra Fry, not called. That's a good sign if you're an Austin fan. Leilani Lopez walking under her own power here. But yeah, absolutely, she mixes in big, especially with the vertical passing attack. If she's out of the lineup, it really hurts this offense. Tashe Winfrey has to have the fourth quarter of her life right now. They need three scores to get back in this game. A third and two screen, that's Cassandra Bills. And if Lopez is not gonna be out on the field, Bills becomes the number one receiver. Bills has a great engine, but sometimes it doesn't seem like her hands are on the steering wheel. Before her injury, we mentioned her injury she had this year, she was lighting secondaries up. Since then, she hasn't done it. Yeah, Cassandra Bills has been suspect at best, but you can't fault that offense. Leilani Lopez has had that kind of a season, and that's Lopez at the bottom of the screen back in. Winfrey finding her for a four-yard completion. How gutsy is Lopez? Just a true competitor. There is no way she's coming out of this football game, the Legends Cup in the fourth quarter. Second and six after that four-yard completion. And I don't know, it's 8.30 left. You've got a 20-point gap. At what point do you go to two-minute offense? Now, you have to go hurry up, number one. It makes you play better. You hurry up. It puts the defense on its heels. I would do it now. Second and six. That looks like maybe Tara Organiziak, the left defensive end, make it the right defensive end, may have jumped. This officiating crew really calling it tight all night on both sides of the ball. I like to see it the other way, though, in a championship game like the NBA. Let the players play. Encroachment number three, Chicago. Five-yard penalty. So that'll make it a second and one. Second down. Ball inside the 12-yard line of Chicago. That's a big break for Austin right now. To Shea Winfrey, there's a lot of time. This is a quick strike offense, but they need points on this drive. At the top of the screen, that is Dominique Collins, the top cover corner for Chicago. Matched up against Bills. They're going to go to that side and complete. A big cushion there given by Dominique Collins. Going back to a story earlier in the week where these wide receivers have the speed advantage over the corners for Chicago. Solid numbers there for Bills, a 13.6 average per catch. The problem is she had that early drop, but since that drop, she's making some catches now. Let's see if she can get in the end zone. Yeah, they're gonna need her to step up. Leilani Lopez has had a tough night, not able to get off like we've seen her for most of the season. Maybe they're rolling that safety over to Lopez. This time, Michelle Marshall in the backfield. Austin calling a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout, Austin. That goes back to not being aware. Tashe Winfrey had no idea where the play clock was. So Austin having to use one of its two precious timeouts. And we'll also take a break from Austin, Texas. When we come back, Austin will be on the doorstep of making this a two-score game. A look at the famed 6th Street in Austin, Texas as we return to Legends Cup 2018. Now, get over here and listen. Hey, listen. Listen to what we're gonna do, okay? Empty right, give me the whip, okay? Empty right, signal her up with a whip. Now, for you, since you're inside, I want you to drag and stay in the back of the end zone and you give me a whip, okay? So it's here, whip, whips. You got a whip, get up through here and go, okay? Now, we gotta get back on it if we don't get it, okay? But go score. I love the call by Michael Avera, keeping it simple for his quarterback. He's got Leilani Lopez one-on-one -on -one out to the outside against Dorian Bridges. That's a mismatch, and they go to Lopez. Touchdown acoustic. There's no give up in this Austin acoustic football team. You gotta wonder why Chicago didn't have their top 
cover corner, Dominique Collins on Leilani Lopez. This is too easy against Bridges. Yeah, I'm not sure Dorian Bridges can ever match up one-on-one -on -one with Leilani Lopez, the number one receiver in the LFL. There is still a lot of time left in this ball game. Austin back in it. 28 to 14 with this quick strike offense. Like you said, that's an eternity. The big factor here, no timeouts for Austin. Both of them blown on poor decisions by Tashe Winfrey. That'll fall incomplete and maintain a 14 point lead for Chicago. Not sure about that call by Mike Oliveira. They tried that swing pass to Mar Michelle Marshall early in the game. It did not work. I don't know why they come back to it, because there's no shot. Even if she caught the ball, she was going to get in. Austin with a six-play, 35-yard drive. That took up 256. At least it keeps this team alive. The Austin defense, even though there's 28 points on the board, doesn't look like they're playing great, but they're playing solid football. They need one more stop right now. First and 10, Caldwell electing to keep it herself. Great open field tackle by Chris Daniels. Jane Caldwell on the other side of the football though, she's kept her eye on the prize all year long. She's been going after this Legends Cup. She needs a drive right now to kill some clock and not give Austin the ball back. Yeah, and Chicago's had a lot of success on the ground with Javille Thompson and Jane Caldwell. So you got to factor, you're going to see a lot of that if you're the Austin defense and you may want to crowd the box. This game plan was designed not for Jane Caldwell to throw the football. Right now, the last thing they want is an interception. That was a six yard carry by Caldwell, setting up a second and four as we approach the six minute mark of the fourth quarter. Caldwell under center, full backfield. A little confusion this time. Hand off to Tamika Robinson. Marissa Goldston all over Robinson. That is the third time tonight there's been confusion in the backfield on basic handoffs. I'm not sure if Caldwell went the wrong way or if Robinson went the wrong way. My money's on Robinson, the rookie. He's had a great season thus far, but at times has looked very much so like a rookie. Third and eight ball at the Chicago 17-yard line. Receivers flank to the left side of Caldwell. Here comes the blitz, Kendra Robinson. Robinson made Caldwell hurry. One other thing to point out, if you're new to the LFL, the game clock is a continuous running clock. It does not stop until we get inside of two minutes. Good play again by the Austin Acoustic defense. Jane Caldwell, she felt that blitz, but sometimes you gotta stay in the pocket and know you're gonna get hit. But when she backed out, the ball was inaccurate. Here it is, a fourth and eight. We've got a timeout down on the field by Chicago. They want to talk this over. Timeout, Chicago. Keith Hack understands how big this call is. He want to make sure him and his offensive coordinators are on the same page. Yeah, if you turn the ball over on downs, you're going to give it to Austin inside the 17-yard line which is the perfect setup if you are down two scores if you're Austin. It's fourth and eight. They could take a penalty and go back inside the 15-yard line and punt if you believe in your number one defense, or you throw the ball if you believe in the arm of Jane Caldwell. Let's find out. Fourth and eight. Looks like they're definitely going to go for it here from the shotgun. Here comes the blitz, a release, and that is dropped by Tamika Robinson. As we talked about earlier, now Austin takes over at the 17-yard line. Again, Jane Caldwell throwing off her back foot. That makes an inaccurate pass. Yes, Robinson should have called it, but that's twice in a row behind the receiver. I don't know that Robinson gets the first down even if she catches that football. That was a poor call by Chicago. I think what you do there is you take the delay a game, get backed up inside the 15-yard line, punt it away, Make this Austin offense work the entirety of the field against your stout defense. Maybe the number one defense ever in the history of the LFL. I agree. First and 10. Look at this. To Shea Winfrey catching fire now, completing an out pattern to Michelle Marshall. Teresa Petrozillo playing way off the football, not wanting to get beat deep, but this is way too easy. Good yardage for Austin. 
Michelle Marshall amazingly holds on to it over the boards. That'll now set up a second and one. Ball inside Chicago's eight yard line. From the shotgun, poorly handled snap by Winfrey. Now rolling right, buying time. And running out of time and real estate as Kristen Morrison chases down Winfrey. You mentioned how a lot of times Winfrey makes little mistakes, not veteran moves. Well, this is one of them. The snap is perfect. You can't fumble the snap and throw off the whole play. That was a loss of five yards, setting up a third and six. That clock continues to run. You're down two scores. Where is the urgency with this offense? I don't get it. Right now, I would be running the two-minute offense. You're right. It's you got to be urgent. you got to put points on the board. Third and six. Ball at the 13 of Chicago. They're going to fake the draw. Go over the middle. And that's intercepted. Toya Jerome. Cassandra Bills mishandling the catch. Popping it up. And Jerome with potentially a game-closing interception. Another pure, flat-out drop by Cassandra Bills. The delay across the middle, she's open. Winfrey delivers a perfect pack. That's twice now. Another drop. If she keeps playing like this, she's going to become a defensive back real quick. I thought the ball was a little high, but certainly catchable by Bills. And that's a huge turnover if you're an Austin Acoustic fan. Chicago electing to keep it on the ground with Javille Thompson. That'll be a loss of a yard. Brittany Dowdy on the tackle. Not to be all over Cassandra Bills right now, but that's two key drops in the championship game. One for six in the first quarter. That one inside the 10-yard line. You have to catch that ball. Yeah, Cassandra Bills not having the greatest season. And what I don't understand, in 2017, she was a breakout rookie star that everybody had on their radar. Not so much in 2018. Second and 11, ball at the Chicago 6. From the shotgun, Caldwell again keeping it herself. I tell you what, the game that Brittany and Courtney Dowdy are playing has been unbelievable to this point. They're playing on a championship level tonight. Both of them having great games. They've been all over Chicago and Jane Caldwell. Look at Brittany Dowdy fighting off the block and tracking down Caldwell. Now at third and 11, ball remains at the six. If Austin could get a quick four and out here, they can get great field position back. This is Caldwell going down the field. Great coverage by Marissa Goldston on Allie Alberts. Allie Alberts, who has blazing speed. She was a track champion in college in St. Louis. She could not get behind Goldston. Great coverage. The clock will continue to run and will not stop till the two-minute warning. This works out beautifully for Austin. If they can get a turnover on downs here, they take over at the six-yard line. They have the offense, can score quicker than any other offense in the LFL. There's a lot of time left. And that should take us to the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. When we come back, Chicago will have it fourth and 11 at their own six-yard line and a huge opportunity for the Austin defense to get him back into this game and to Shea Winfrey back out onto the field. Back to LFL football night for the final two minutes of play from Legends Cup 2018. The play of the season for this defense of Austin, they have to come up with a stop. Fourth and 11, Caldwell again going down the field. And that is a good thing that Marissa Goldston did not intercept that football as Austin will now take over on downs at the six yard line. It looked like Goldston was actually trying to catch that ball. That would have been as good as a punt, but now they get the ball back inside the red zone. They need to score absolutely right now. Austin has no timeouts remaining have burnt both timeouts because of poor game situational awareness by Tashe Winfrey. I would go right back at Leilani Lopez. Go to your money player. First and goal ball at the Chicago six. Empty backfield from the shotgun. They are going to look to Lopez. 
on a similar pattern that she scored on. I'm not sure if they're, are they going to give her a score here? A six yard completion to Lopez and momentarily, yes. It is a touchdown for Austin. It's the same play, it's the whip, except she's got help and coverage by Allie Albert. Makes a great catch, she gets hit, but she does not hit the board. That is a touchdown for Austin, wow. I'd be surprised if they don't take another look at this. It's inside of two minutes. So the head referee, Terry Fulgott, will have to step in. Ref! Hey! How can you not tally? Look at that! Well, for you! Keith Hack looking for the review. I don't think she touched the wall. Let's see if that is, yeah, they're going to take another how look might, at how this. How about we put a uh, referee official challenge on this thing? I think it goes for review under two minutes anyway. Sir. We have to we have to initiate it. Coach is both out of timeout, right. so it's under two minutes on, it's on us. Like let's this. just take a look at yeah. it. No it way you yeah. let's, let's take a look at it. Hey, we're going to take a review of this. The previous play is under review. I think that's the right call. In a big game like this, obviously, you got to get another look at all scoring plays. Watch the athletic move, though, by Leilani Lopez. Great catch. She is not against the wall. In fact, Albert is between her and the wall. She reverses out. I think she's in. I think this is our best angle right here. Albert saves her from hitting the wall, but there's the knee. Where is that football when the knee hits? Wow, that's a great angle right there. It did look like the knee was down. After review, the play has changed. The player's runner's knee was down at the half yard line. That's the, the right call, down, I think. Half yard line. So second and goal now inside the one yard line. What do you do here? They don't have a power back. Either Winfrey takes it on her own outside because you can't do a quarterback sneak. I don't know why they don't have one of the Dowdy sisters back in the backfield. That is Brittany Dowdy at fullback, but they're gonna go to Rachel Washington. Allie Alberts all over it, and this is where Austin's gotta get up now. Rachel Washington, if you're going to give her the ball, give her the ball in space, get her outside, use her speed, not inside against Allie Alberts. We've got a flag on the play, a lot of discussion down on the field. We'll see if this goes up against Austin, but yeah, I don't think Rachel Washington would be my go-to back in this scenario. You've got to get some size in the backfield. Absolutely, but right now, Chantel Taylor's going nuts. Personal foul, Chicago, after this is goal, automatic first down. Chantel Taylor, she was getting held by Aubrey Williams, but then she went after Williams, which you can't do in this situation, and they flagged her for a personal foul. So that's going to move it half the distance to the goal line inside the hey, one. You, you can't get cute here if you're Austin. You You've got to get it in the end zone. They're absolutely going to throw the football with that set right there. Third and goal. Winfrey taking a lot of time looking over that defense, now rolling left and getting caught. A great open field tackle by Ali Alberts. And the clock continues to run. Winfrey in no hurry. Not at all. In fact, she had Bills open quick. I'm not sure why she didn't throw the football on a quick in. She decides to run, takes a lot of time off the clock, and more importantly, does not get in the end zone. But further, why are they huddling in this scenario? That cost him at least 30 seconds. A fourth and goal, your final shot if you're Austin. And that's it, caught. Cassandra Bills finally holding on to a football. Touchdown, Austin. Great catch by Bills, not a great throw. It's a back shoulder, a whip route. She made a great move on Dominique Collins and scored the points. You're off. Go, hey, come here. We're gonna go 31 lead, acoustic leg 31 lead. 31 lead, that's a call to Rachel Washington. Again, I'm not sure she has the ability to get in with her size. Why not try to whip route again? Or go to Brittany or Courtney Dowdy in a fullback type scenario. Here's the extra point attempt. They're gonna go to Dowdy, but that is Kristen Morrison actually make it Rachel Washington. To your point, Rachel Washington just doesn't have the size to go up the middle. And they got great one-on-one -on -one receivers. We saw it twice now with Bills and then Leilani Lopez. Just try that again. This is still a one-score game. If Austin could recover this score and convert the two-point conversion, we will be headed to overtime. 
But it all comes down to the leg of Aubrey Williams here. And here's the kick. It sails into the crowd. So Chicago will take over on downs and run the clock out. Not a great kick by Williams, but I like the way the coverage for Chicago. They were going to try to take out the interference, so the ball would have to bounce to one of their best hands people, Shabrier Servillian. Now all Chicago will have to do is take a knee, as Austin has no timeouts remaining, so they cannot stop the clock. Head coach Mike Oliveira and quarterback to Shea Winfrey, they're going to watch this game, and there's so many missed opportunities. They could have been the Legends Cup champs, but it's not going to happen. And Winfrey could be playing in her final game in an Austin acoustic uniform. Early rumors are Michelle Angel is the target free agent quarterback for Austin. How special would she be in this offense? She would fit perfectly with Mike Oliveira. She handles this offense just like she handles the offense in Seattle. But you're right, the big question, will Winfrey come back? And that's Steph McCormick. You could see her tearing up, Ana Garza tearing up. This is the end of the road for several veterans on this roster as Austin will fall in Legends Cup 2018. In the other bench, a little more excitement as the Chicago Bliss with this championship will become the winningest franchise in LFL history with four Legends Cup championships. You really have to hand it to Keith Hack. He is at the top of the charts when you talk about head coaches in the LFL. All he likes to do is win, and he is not satisfied unless he wins the championship. And that is the look of dejection from Anna Garza as the confetti starts to fall on the Chicago Bliss, your 2018 Legends Cup champions. Jane Caldwell, the quarterback, finally had the game she needed to have to become an elite quarterback, and she finally won the Legends Cup as an LFL quarterback. And how about Allie Alberts going out on top? There's Alberts embracing Caldwell, coming off that Eastern Conference Championship pick six, and then this. What better way to end your LFL career? We always say it, though, we love offense, but defense wins championships. That's what won it for Chicago this season. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Let's listen in on this, though. Nobody's going to remember the score. That's Coach Keith Hack and Allie Alberts embracing one another. We're going to go to break, come back with the trophy presentation. Back to LFL football night, a jubilant scene down on the field. Let's go down to Heidi Golznick. All right, Coach Hack, an incredible win and your fourth championship. Talk to us about how it feels to be the LFL's most winning team in history. Uh, it's amazing, it really is. It, you know, I can give you the cliche answer that you know it's the best thing ever. You know, that without the players, without the coaches, but it's an amazing experience. And I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll tell you, get hat, get hat. I'll tell you what. Uh, Austin, don't get there. Austin, hey, they battled. They really did. We thought this game was gonna. We thought it'd be a tight game, but I mean, they played well. They did, and you know, we were fortunate enough to to win the game. You know, we did. We made. We, they made more mistakes than we did. It really came down to that. Coach Keith Hack, now the winningest coach in LFL history as Heidi Goldsnack continues to track down very happy Chicago Bliss players. You said this is your last game last season. How does it feel to go out on top? I mean, it was ugly as fuck, but a win is a win, and it feels so good. Like, we did it. It didn't matter. It's four. It feels amazing. Like, this confetti... The best. It's beautiful. beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Allie Alberts, in my opinion, one of the greatest players ever to play in the LFL on defense and on offense. What a fitting ending. Last week in the Eastern Conference Championship game, a pick six to win it. And then tonight in Austin, she wins the Legends Cup. Yeah, truly a storybook ending for Allie Alberts. Now Heidi's down on the field with the game MVP, Javille Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. Javelle, yeah. what an effort.
effort in bringing home Chicago's fourth championship. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm excited. Even though I got hurt, I just didn't want to get out the game. I'm excited about my team. I'm just excited for this period. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I spoke with Dave Mills, the offensive coordinator of Chicago, that was the game plan. The game was in Javel Thompson's hands, and she delivered. What a night. What a night indeed. Four Legends Cup championship trophies now reside in Chicago, Illinois. And what a game it was. It came down to an onside kick in a game that many thought Chicago would route Austin, give Austin credit. A very young franchise with a bright future ahead of it. And for Chicago, the loss of Dominique Collins, Allie Alberts, we'll see how that plays out. But as far as the 2018 season, the Chicago Bliss are your Legends Cup champions. What a run it's been. For my broadcast partner, Bobby Huco, our sideline reporter, Heidi Golznick, and all the great people behind the scenes at LFL Football Night. Thank you for an amazing year. We'll see you in 2019.